All right. Uh, I'm going to go through the series of uh, Matthew on Sunday mornings and Sunday evenings. We're going to be going on uh, Acts. And I'll say this before I say it again. Uh, God gives me a message. I'll just throw it right in the midst of this. And he usually does every Sunday. And we're teaching Revelations. If I had a message, I'd throw it right in Revelation. And, uh, but Matthew chapter 1, I've taught it several times. It's got a lot <clears throat> of uh, good stuff in it, a lot of good meat of the Bible in it. And I could teach on it all day long, but for the sake of time, we're not. You know, we time ourselves here 30 minutes. Okay. Get it? Okay, I'll make sure I don't go over. Um, and I can't stop and t tell every story about every little thing in this, but I'll, I'll try to uh, make it interesting and, and teach on what I think God's given me. We'll go ahead and start it. The book of generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. So in Jesus' genealogy, uh, there's two very prominent people in the Old Testament that's in Jesus' genealogy, and that is David and Abraham. And they're not the only ones in his genealogy, but they're the, the top two guys mentioned because mission, uh, they're two most prominent from the Old Testament. And I want to tell about some of the genealogies. They weren't that hard to keep up with. All you did, somebody had a baby, they'd write the name down. <laughs> you know, just don't keep, keep the record. Um, the problem with a lot of it was wars they take people's scrolls and burn them and and just the wars just I mean don't tell how much smarter the world would be how much more technology we'd have it just one for war you go and you conquer a nation you go burn all, everything they got all the records all everything that's how the tribes got lost you know, these 12 tribes of israel they got lost because when babylonians took them over they just burn all their scrolls up they didn't have a clue uh who the what tribe they were after that but here's why jesus this genealogy, now there's one mentioned in Luke 2, and it's from the line of Mary, the men of her line, and this one's from uh, Joseph. Now Joseph, of course, we know what Jesus' blood father, but he was his father. And we'll get into that a little bit here in a minute. But one reason that it's not hard to believe that you keep up with Jesus' blood life, one out of its genealogies mentioned in the Old Testament, but Joseph was supposed to have been king. He got cheated out of being the king of Israel. And I'll prove that here in a minute. So even though they were knocked off the throne and they never was a king again, they'd still write down who would who would have been king. And uh, I'll get into that in a minute too. Okay. Isaiah 11, 1 through 2. And this is talking about uh, David, that the Messiah is supposed to be coming through the line of David. There said, come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. And that's David. And a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The Spirit of wisdom, understanding, the Spirit of counsel, by the Spirit of knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. Now, they, that Isaiah 11, 1 through 2, or, or chapter 11, it goes on and on and on talking about the Messiah and how it comes from David. But I just, like I said, for sake of time. Now, Abraham, this is Galatians 3 16. Now, to Abraham and his seed, notice that singular, where the promises made. He said, not, and to seeds, <laughs> hey, I just said that, <laughs> as of many, but as one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. So all the promises were made, like all nations will be blessed through your seed, singular. Let's talk about Jesus Christ. Okay, Abraham begat Isaac. You know, Abraham was what? 100, around 100 year old, and Sarah was like 91 year old when he had Isaac. And, you know, he told Abraham, you'll be a father of many nations. He's like, well, we'll have to hurry up and get this <laughs> happening. <laughs> you know? And uh, But he begat Isaac. And Isaac was kind of a little bit of an old man, too. He, he met Rebecca. You know, he, kind of, he was probably about 40 year old or something. And then uh, he begat Jacob, you know, and Esau. And, and then Jacob begat Judas and his brethren. Remember, Jacob, uh, they seen Laban had a daughter. Uh, uh, Rachel and Laban ended up tricking him and gave him Leah. He's like, oh, I didn't want Leah, I wanted Rachel. So he's like, well, work with me a little bit longer to get her too. So he's like, alright. So he was, he was he got both wives. And because uh, Leah was despised, he didn't like her as good as Rachel, she was the one that was able to have kids first. 
So he had Judah through uh, her. And notice that says Judas. That means Judah. Okay, let me run through this real quick. Peter in English is Pedro in Spanish. Eric in English is Enrique in Spanish. Uh, Tito in Spanish is Titus in English. When languages change, the words change. Jesus is Jesus in Spanish. Uh, he's like Oasis in Greek or something. Uh, in English, is Jesus. And so that's why the spelling will change on some of these. You know? Okay. And, okay, Judah was promised that the line would come out of his tribe too. The line of Judah. You know, we talk about the line. All right, and Judas would get fairies and Zara of Tamar. Let me tell you real quick about what happened to that little story here. You think you've got crazy family tree, uh, crazy stuff happening in your family? All right, Judah has said that he separated from his brothers. And he went around the Canaanites and all that, married a Canaanite woman. Now, that's stuff they weren't supposed to be doing, guys. And anyway, he had three sons. One named Ur. He almost had a good name. If it had I see after it's Eric, that's close as the Bible. My name's God, it's Ur. How's that kind of name, Ur? Hey, Ur! Especially around here, they go, Ur, hey, Ur. Uh, and then he, then he had um, Onan, and then he had Sheila, okay, girly name. The author, he didn't know how to name a kid for nothing. All right, and then, uh, well, uh, the first Ur was uh, married Tamar. And he was wicked, so God just killed him. He said he just wicked in God's eye. God killed him. God's like, man, I don't like you. You're a wicked guy. You're dead. So, so Judah said, here, told Tamar, said, I'm going to let Odin marry you. And that way, you know, the Bible talks about your seed lives on if, you, if you're, uh, this is Old Testament now, so don't, we don't practice this no more. If you was married to a woman, you was the elder son or whatever, you married to a woman, you died, your brother, younger, if he was single, he would marry your wife and, and have kids. And it would kind of be your seed. It would be your inheritance and all that. And, uh, well, so Onan had to marry Tamar. And he didn't want to give seed to Ur. Because there was probably, if God killed him, he probably wasn't a real likable guy. So Onan's like, man, I don't want to give seed to Ur. So Onan married her, but he wouldn't give her a kid. You know, and I'm going to get in detail because kids here will happen. So God killed him too. So, so uh, uh, Judah be like, well, he told her, so when my son Sheila goes older, you know, he's supposed to give him to her too. He said, I'll give him to you when he gets older. Well, he got older and he wouldn't give it, give him to marry Tamar. So he's scared it. he'd die too. And so Tamar's pretty upset about it. She's sitting there waiting. She's wanting to have kids. You know, women used to want to have kids. And so she played a little trick on Judah. Remember, Judah's backslid. He's living around Canaanites. He's not a holy person. So here's his fate. He goes into town. Tamar dresses up like a prostitute. She puts a mask on, like COVID-19, hides herself a little bit. And he's like, look, uh, you know, I want to do this wicked act, but I don't have any money. She said, well, just give me, your, you know, something. So he gave her his, his, I think he had whatever. And then he ended up getting her pregnant. Well, he went back to pay her, and she wasn't there. And everybody's like, there's no prostitute in this town. He's like, well, there was a prostitute here. You know, imagine going back to town. Hey, where's that prostitute at? I need to pay her. <laughs> but he went back to pay her, and she wasn't there. So he didn't know. But then he found out Tamar was pregnant. He said, let her be burned. He was going to kill her. She was going to get a death sentence for being pregnant. He said, who's the father? And she brought back his thing, whatever. He's like, oh, I guess I'm the father. So no more death sentence. Everything's cool. So that's where them kids come from. She had to trick him. And he, he said that she was righteous for doing that because she wanted to have kids. And he, he owed her a son. And he didn't give her a son. So she did what she had to do, get pregnant. I t like I said, women used to want to have kids. Uh, so that's where them two guys come from in Jesus' line. Well, you know, fairies came from anyway. And fairies begat Ezra, Ezra begat Aram. Aram begat Minadab, and Minadab begat Nessa, and Nessa begat Salmon. And Salmon begat Boaz of Rechab, and Boaz begat Obed of Ruth, 
and then we forget Jesse. That's David's dad. When we find out this genealogy too, like Ruth was David's ancestor and all that. And Jesse begat David, the king. And the king begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias. So David gets a little honorable mention about being that, that little wicked deal. You know, he, he seen Bathsheba taking a bath or whatever. If he'd been in war like he's supposed to, he sent other people to war, but he didn't want to go. He wouldn't have found his wickedness. But he's seen uh, um, Bathsheba, so he ended up, guys, pay attention to me. Don't pay attention to answer, please. And uh, so he um, seen Bathsheba, so he had, he got her pregnant. When he found out he got her pregnant, he said, oh man, her husband ain't been around. He's been out in the army, so he had Uriah killed. Very, very wicked. So, uh, he gets a big honorable mention to him for that wickedness. But still, even though Bathsheba's wicked, now that, that kid that David got her pregnant with, he ended up dying. So they ended up having Solomon. Solomon wasn't the firstborn kid from David either. And, uh, but he ended up being the one that's in the Messiah's ancestry. Okay, so we, it, it wasn't a perfect genealogy. Everybody wasn't, they weren't perfect people. And that just goes to show God can use people that's not perfect. God can use people that's had a bad past. Now, let me tell you something about David, though. What he done with Bathsheba, it wrecked his life. It, his kids went all the pieces. Absalom turned on him. He had one son rape a daughter and kill on each other and all this stuff. And it was because of his deed with Bathsheba. And I've seen preachers, it's very dangerous for preachers. I've seen preachers do that. They're leaving their wife for another woman and their kids get on drugs, fall apart, die, and overdosing. But I've seen preachers repent, go back to their wives, you know, go back to praying for their kids, and eventually their kids get back on track. But I've seen preachers just never come back to their kids, overdose, and just have miserable lives. And man, I'm telling you, when you do wicked stuff, you're not the only ones going to be punished. Everybody in your circle, your family, your friends, and everything, they'd be punished along with you. Um, and Solomon begat Rehoboam, and Rehoboam begat Abia, and Abia begat Asa. Asa begat Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat begat Joram, Joram begat Ozias. Ozias begat Jotham, Jotham begat Achaz, Achaz begat Ezekias. Ezekias begat Manassas, Manassas begat Ammon, Ammon begat Josias. And Josiah began Zechariah and his brethren about the time they were carried away to Babylon. You know, it's like a read those names good. You know why? Because I listen to Alexander Scurby. I let him <laughs> pronounce them for me. I just learned it from him. But Zechariah was promised. Okay. Zechariah was promised. Okay, by the time they were taken away to Babylon. Zechariah was a wicked king. That's one reason they fell to Babylon. The tribe of Judah fell to Babylon, the Ju Judah, the Israel, whatever. They fell to Babylon. The Jews fell to Babylon. It ended with that guy. And God then told David, he said, through this kingly line is where the Messiah is going to come from. But then it got right right here with Jacob and Isaac because God told him, you'll never have blood. You'll never have a descendant sit on the throne. So we're like, we got a big bad problem here because David said that so your lines will come Messiah, and then Jeconias is that line, and Jeconias messed it up. So we're like, oh man, I'm gonna read where that happened. This is in Jeremiah 22, 30. Thus said the Lord, write ye this man childless. He's talking about uh, Jeconias. Write ye this man childless, a man that shall not prosper in his days. For no man of his seed shall prosper sitting upon the throne of David and ruling any more Judah. So man, we got a bad problem. We just told David, and for like hundreds of years, they're like, the Messiah's going to come from David. Then we get to that, it gets ruined. And you're like, well, what's the problem here? But God fix it. God knows what he's talking about. So we got the virgin birth. You got the line of David to Joseph, which ain't Jesus' blood anyway. But Jesus wasn't no bit nothing can does. Jack and I, so you look at Mary's genealogy, he's not there. David is, but he's not there. And all these Catholics and stuff saying that, you know, Joseph obviously had more kids. And they said, well, uh, they were older than Jesus. No, Jesus come first. Because if they come before Jesus, then they would have been the ones in line to have been king. So Jesus was not the first one, guys. He was, jo Joseph had more kids with Mary, but it, he wasn't married before Mary. Not even a good try. That's a try the Catholics use, but it's not even a good try. And after they were brought to Babylon, just... Take a nice, we get selective, you know, selective, we get Zerubbabel. 
And listen, these weren't kings no more. <laughs> you know, they were, I, there was a woman I met in uh, Rogersville from Korea. She said, my family was so Korea. And my family was souls. We were the emperors. We got overthrown. Now I live in Rogersville. <laughs> you know, and I make like 20000 a year. But I was a, I, I would have been an emperor if it wouldn't be been for that old war stuff, you know. And uh, so... Uh, so let's forget to go. So we'll forget Abiel, and Abiel will get Elikum, and Elikum will get Azor. And Azor will get Sadok, Sadok will get Achim, and Achim will get Eliud. And Eliud will get Eleazar, and Eliud will get Matthew, and Matthew will get Jacob. Who's that guy right there? You all should know who that is. Paul Emory Washington. Everybody should know who this guy is. All right. Let me explain Paul Emory Washington. He, he's actually dead now, and he's got a son named Bill. I was going to put Bill up here, but I did get a chance to. All right. George Washington, when he was made president of the United States, they wanted to make him king. He wouldn't let them make him king. He's like, listen, you don't want me king. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't be a bad one, but don't tell them what my descendants will do. We do presidents in America. We don't do king. That's a good thing George Washington did. But if he would have took a kingly line, if he would have been king, guess what would have happened? That guy would have been our king. You know why you never heard that guy? Because he's not any more famous than any of us. That's the same way with Joseph. He would have been king, but his ancestors messed it up, so he ended up being a carpenter. That guy wasn't. I mean, he's a good guy. We don't we don't judge prominence by money and fame. That guy wasn't rich. He wasn't famous either. Only only thing he was known for is that he would have been king if George Washington would have took would have would have took that king kingly throne, whatever. And now his son Bill would have been king. I didn't get a chance to get a picture of Bill. So remember that. Don't make that hard to believe that Joseph would have been king because this is a kingly line. It just, it got ruined. So ruined, it got ruined. Sorry, I'm trying to get the main station accent out of me while I'm up here teaching. Right. And Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who was called Christ. And, you know, here's something about Joseph and Mary. My kids, if anything happens to me and Jenny, my parents get them. They get full custody of them. We work that out. And be praying for them hard if that ever happens. Not for my oldest two, but for my, my mm -hmm. youngest one. Mm -hmm. All right? But if something happens to my parents, then my brother's next in line. You know why I picked them, my parents and my brother? Because I know they would take care of my kids. And why do you think God picked Joseph and Mary? Because he knew that they would take care of his kid. So Mary and Joseph are worth thinking very highly of, but not worth praying to. You've got one scripture or nothing to pray to Mary. You pray to her, guess what? She don't hear it. And she was never meant to be prayed to. But, but it, does, it does tell you how good the, the people they were because they uh, was chosen to be the father of God. You know, father, mother of God, the son. Okay. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. From David to the Karen to Babylon, 14 generations. From the Karen away to Babylon to Christ are 14 generations. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. But as his mother Mary was the spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Some people think that they were already married. I don't know what man in the world would get married and not consummate the marriage. Why would he wait all day? I think they were engaged. I think his spouse meant engaged. So here he was. Mary had to be a good woman if God chose her to be the mother of Jesus. So he's engaged to this real good woman. He's a good guy. And she ends up pregnant. He's like, that's a shocker. <laughs> you know, and, you know uh, Mary's like, I, I'm a virgin. And well, he's like, yeah, we know how that stuff happens, you know. But she was a virgin. And, you know, that's one lie. Man, men can believe some lies, but they ain't going to believe that one. But it took an angel to come to Joseph and tell him, look, well, man, you know, she is a mother child of the Holy Ghost. Said, and, uh, and Joseph, her husband, be a just man, and not make it, not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put away privately. 
Why, why was he going to be a just man and put away probably? Because they, but in Deuteronomy, they could have killed her for that. They took virginity very seriously. Man, you know, the more I study the Bible, the more I see how wicked our society is concerning sex and fornication and adultery and all this stuff. Man, we got so far away from what the Bible, even at, all the way through history, though. You know, we read about times like the Romans and the Greeks and stuff, how they was full of debauchery and they had all this sex stuff. And guess what they had? A lot of problems, a lot of diseases, a lot of, a lot of major problems. And, and it, it caused a lot of the Rome to fall. It caused a lot of great men to fall. And uh, it's wives because we got away from some. God would tended no sex at all until you got married. And you stayed married and you didn't. You left everybody alone. If that was the case right now, 90% of the world's probably would be gone. STDs out of here. AIDS, all that stuff. All STDs out. These kids are having to go through all these problems and everything. All this stuff. Out of here. We just obeyed the Bible. And, and that's one thing I like about this church. We don't, we don't build our doctrines on preachers' rants. My whole life I'll hear a preacher rant about something. Well, this, blah, 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 blah. Not quoting any scriptures, they're just going around. And then not knowing the people sitting around them don't read the Bible. They don't study the Bible, so they listen to the preacher rant and say, well, he's going on a rant, so surely he ain't wrong about nothing. He's a preacher. He don't get nothing wrong. And then they build their doctrines on preacher's rants, and then they go through rants. You just got everybody... Fighting and divided on rants, not scriptures anyway. So that's why I like this church. That's why I like this church. As the world's dying and, and, and the church is dying, it's dying, people, it's dying. I'm glad we're here four days a week. I'm glad you guys support me. We ain't got a ton of people supporting us. I thank God for the ones that do support me. This stuff is serious. This is not a game. Christianity is not a game. You know what's most important about your life? is the state you're living in when you die. That's the most important thing in your life. You know what's next and most important thing? You have your kids, your people you're responsible for. That's where they, how they're living when they die determines where they go. And that where they go, they go for eternity. So don't you laugh at me. Talk about me like a dog because I'm coming to church when most people decide not to. Sickness has been here my whole entire life. People still went to church. But Fox News tells us not to go. CNN, lesbians tell us not to go. We're not going. I never said, man, I. Next. <laughs> if I, okay. Just, if a dazzle that is a virgin be betrothed to a husband, remember the NIV says if a man rapes a woman, he has to marry her. So this kind of blows the hole in that NIV, which was translated by transvestite. The same man that owns the satanic Bible owns the NIV. No, they're all not the same. No, it's not the best translation. But never let a virgin be betrothed to a husband, and a man find her in the city and lie with her. Now, this ain't rape. This is, she was consensual. Then you shall bring them both into the gates of the city, and you shall stone them with stones that they die. Man, everybody around here had been stoned if that was still law. I wish they would not make it. Adultery is against the law. I wish they'd enforce it. They cut out all this stupid stuff that's going on. I tell you, man, this, half the stuff people was in jail for, yeah, getting robbed, it causes you some problems. My neighbor got his truck stolen the other day. It caused him some problems. You know what caused him a lot more problems than getting his truck stolen? Adultery. It caused him a lot more problems than getting his truck stolen. Nobody got in trouble for the adultery. They got in trouble for the truck. Guys going away for a long time stealing the truck. I wish they enforced this junk again. Calm this stuff down. Our society is just going to a big old mess. All right. Um, then you should them over to the gates of the city. You should stone them with stones that they die. The damsel, because she cried not. Now she cried, rape, rape, help. She was clear because she was being raped. Not, she didn't have to marry the guy, raped her, you know, like the NIV says. Uh, being in a city and the man because he have humbled his neighbor's wife so they should put away evil from among you. So, you know, that was a death sentence. So Joseph didn't want to see Mary get killed because he's like, man, you know, Mary is a good woman. She might have had a mess up, but I just don't want to see her get killed. But while he thought of these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream saying, Joseph, now, son of David. See, that's another reference to him being in a David's uh, line. That he, you know, it would be, he wouldn't have been something you'd be out there hammering all day like, man, 
building carpenter and all that stuff. But I would have been a king. You'll see a king come by or a Caesar or something, you know, a Herod. And be, they got all, you know, people sitting there fanning them and feeding them grapes and got all these servants and nice clothes. You're sitting there hammering, but uh, that's supposed to be me. I hate you, uh, Babylon, <laughs> you know. And uh, fear not, take thee, marry the wife. That which is conceived as her is of the Holy Ghost. And Joseph probably knowing the Bible as well. That gets to happen one time because that was prophesied in the Old Testament. He said, well, that gets to happen one time. I guess this is it. And she shall bring forth a son. And she got his name, Jesus. <clears throat> For he shall save his people from their sin. Jesus is, is actually the Greek way of saying Joshua. So uh, you won't see Joshua mentioned nowhere in the New Testament. In Acts, I think chapter 8, it's mentioned, he's mentioned, but it's he's called Jesus. And it wasn't talking about Jesus, this Jesus, it was talking about Joshua. Jesus is how you say Joshua in Greek. So in case you didn't know that. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now listen, we speak English, it's okay to call Jesus Jesus. Everybody's like, oh, you gotta call him Yeshua. Listen, the Hebrew that you hear Yeshua, that was invented in the 1800s. That wasn't from 2,000, 5,000, 4,000 years ago. They didn't even know what Hebrew sounded like. Hebrew language was dead until the 1800s. Was it Benjamin, Yehuda, or something like that? He got up together and, and just reinvented how it was supposed to be pronounced. And then he said, okay, I guess this is supposed to be pronounced Yeshua. And so then everybody comes up, the John Hagee people, and I go, well, we're going to call Jesus Yeshua now, or God ain't going to listen to us. No, he's been calling Jesus a lot longer he's been calling Yeshua. Yeshua from the 1800s, Jesus from at least the 1500s, he's been called that, once English got settled and everything. So I've seen more people get saved under the name Jesus. I've never seen nobody get saved under Yeshua. I've never seen them go back and preach, Yeshua, Yeshua, and the people get saved. I always see people get saved under Jesus. We speak English, it's okay calling Jesus. Not one problem with that. Okay. Now all this was done, it might be fulfilled, which is spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child. She shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which be interpreted is God with us. That's another reference to the Trinity. I know a lot of people say, oh, that just means he brings God's power with us. Yeah, he did that, but he's also God the Son with us. Okay. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had been in him, and took into him his wife. This is why I don't believe they was already married. I believe they were married afterwards, because it says here that he took in him her to be his wife. And now, well, later we read, when she starts showing a little bit, she goes visits her cousin named uh, Elizabeth, who was the father. That's mentioned in Luke. Uh, why would she skip town for a little while? Because she was showing more, more than she, yeah, I just got married, but I'm like three or four months pregnant and showing him, and I'm like, hmm, <laughs> you know, so they, it used to, I, I had a teacher in high school, uh, this was in the 90s, so she was probably young, in the, like, 60s or something, she said, man, when I was young, if you got pregnant out of wedlock, you had to go stay with an aunt for a while, and you come back with a story, yeah, I got, I left Harold, got married, and he, he got hit by a train, and left him with a baby, and Everybody, like, oh, because they were shaming. People used to be ashamed to get pregnant out of wedlock and everything. I don't want to shame nobody. But are you girls here that want to have babies? Make sure a husband comes with it. Make sure a husband comes first. Don't bring kids in this world without that mother and father. Kids need a mama and a daddy. Amen. And they need them together in the same house. Not visit one one week, visit one the other week. Oh my gosh, am I actually going there? Yes, I am! We need to go there. Preachers didn't go there when I was growing up. You know what? Divorce rate for people my age is at 99.9%. Well, I mean, I'm not sure if it's that high. But it's high. It's very high. Because preachers are scared. You know why? I tell you the number one reason I want to do Matthew. One, Matthew's got a lot of good meat in it. I mean, it's very good. But I get tired of people saying I'm not being Christ-like. Because I preach the stuff I do. I say the stuff I do. I comment on the stuff I do. I say, okay, you don't think I'm being Christ-like? We'll just go ahead and pull these scriptures up here on the 75-inch TV. Every single scripture in Matthew is going to be pulled up. And we'll see what Jesus preached. I promise you, there ain't a preacher in this country that preaches as intense as Jesus preached. There right. ain't a preacher in this country stepped on toes like Jesus stepped on toes. 
Yeah, Jesus came to deliver us from our sin. Deliver us from our sins. Not for us to just live in it and waller in it and go along with it like we're exempt. Nobody's exempt. Jesus tells you to quit something, you quit. You're not exempt. You're not got a special privilege that you get by with. People wonder why you got so many problems in your life. A lot of times, because you've got sin in your life. You want the problem to go away, get the sin out. Why are we going to have problems when something gets a whole lot of unnecessary problems? But he took Mary be his wife and knew her not. She had brought, brought forth her firstborn son. You know, she didn't stay virgin, Catholic people. Even in our Bible, it says this. It says that Joseph had other kids. She didn't marry. She, they didn't know each other until she had Jesus. That means I just had Jesus. They wanted to know each other. They weren't talking about, you know, hello, how are you doing? My name is Mary. My name is Joseph. No, we, we know what to do. We got kids here, so I can't get too deep. They called his name Jesus. This is, uh, Jesus had brothers and sisters. He had four brothers. Uh, this is not the carpenter's time. <clears throat> it's not his mother called Mary. And his brother James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas. So he had four brothers. All four of them dudes died for the gospel of Jesus Christ. They did. It's all martyred. Well, and it's also on the day of Pentecost. Them dudes are there. They weren't his disciples. I know he had disciples named James and Simon and all that, Judas. This was just, they were popular names. Judas was named after Judah and all that. Joseph was named after Joseph in the Old Testament. And, uh, but yeah, they died with Jesus. And also there, I mean, he died for Jesus. And my brother, I think pretty highly of him. I told you I, I want him to raise my kids if me and Jenny gets run over by a train or something. But if he's going around telling everybody he was God, um, then I didn't believe in it. I wouldn't lose my life over that. I wouldn't go lose my life to go around telling everybody my brother was God. So that's a pretty good sign Jesus was God. It's a pretty good, good sign Jesus Messiah if his family is willing to die for that fact. Uh, and his sisters. He had sisters too? Yep. He just had sisters. Yep. Are they not all with us? Whence then had this man all these things? See, that blows a hole in that whole Virgin Mary and, and all that stuff, you know. And listen, bad doctrines. You know, I, I hear this a lot. Oh, it don't matter what doctrines you teach as long as you get salvation right. Yeah, it matters. Because for hundreds and hundreds of years, because the Catholic Church taught this, I think even Martin Luther believed Mary was a virgin for the rest of her life. Uh, uh, John Wesley, I think, even believed Mary was a virgin. So why? Because they even had that Catholic influence and all that. But we know from reading the Bible, there ain't no way in the world. She's a virgin to ask that Jesus. And then throw that doctrine out the door. But tonight we'll be teaching on Acts. My clock battery's dead. It ain't really moved. <laughs> it says 11.05. I was like, well, I guess I got, what, an hour and a half more to go <laughs> before I get the time limit. But I ain't going to do that. But, but, yeah, I mean, I appreciate everybody helping me with the picnic stuff yesterday. And I know we got four services a week and I added that. But but I, I seen some good things happen from that. And and next month we got Phil Kidd coming. Like I said this morning, everybody, if you like Joe Osteen, you absolutely hate Phil Kidd. <laughs> you know, he's the opposite. And uh, I like him. He's supposed to be the most controversial preacher in the world. You know why? Because he preaches the Bible. Everybody's scared to death of preaching the Bible. I'm not going to be scared to death. Everybody here be thick skin, please. I don't need people here leaving because we read a verse and y'all don't like it. Uh, we've all, including me, sin has affected my life. I want people preaching against the things I used to do, against the things I got caught up in because I'm trying to spare these kids a lot of misery, even adults, a lot of misery. I hear problems and complaints all the time, and most of it comes through sin. Most of them comes to things that a long time ago and they have a hard time. They can't really change it now. And that's why I'm trying to be a preventer. Okay, you tell me out now. Been in a hurry, tell me out.